Spray Tips with Tom Wolf is brought to you by Loveland Products, makers of LI700 penetrating non-ionic surfactant with Lesitec technology. Hello, my name is Tom Wolf, and uh, this is this week's episode of Spray Tips with Tom. Um, first of all, we'll start off with a question of the week, and it's a question I received this week during a, a seminar I gave, and it was, uh, what should I choose, an 80 degree nozzle or a 110 degree nozzle for my sprayer? And the answer is fairly simple. Most nozzles now come only in 110 degrees. Uh, 80 degrees are still available for some manufacturers and from some, for some model as nozzle types. For example, the Wilger, Wilger line of nozzles, their complete nozzle line, is available in 80s or 110s. Uh, some of the older flat fan nozzles as well are still available in the 80s, but all of the low drift air induction tips that we have are only available in 110 degrees. And that's a good thing. 110 degrees typically gives you a bit of a wider fan angle, allows for a little bit more fluctuation of boom height. It also, they also operate better at lower pressures, and those are all good features to have with a low drift nozzle. If you're using a conventional style nozzle, a conventional flat fan, or perhaps you have an, a, a wheeled boom, a pull type sprayer, an 80 degree nozzle is still okay and uh, there's no reason to deviate from that. Um, they drift a little bit less and they're less pro prone to plugging than the equivalent 110 degree version of the same thing. So uh, hopefully that answers that question and that'll take us into this week's bigger topic which is boom height. Um, how do we select the right boom height for a sprayer? Now, boom height is re-emerging in the business as an important variable that determines good uh, sprayer performance. Uh, we, when we went to suspended boom sprayers, either pull type or self-propelled, we realized that the booms tend to sway a little more, tend to hit the ground a little bit more easily, and as a result, we tended to raise boom heights up, up to maybe 30 or even 40 inches off the ground. Um, and that, that, is, uh, that protects the nozzle from damage, but it also creates a few other problems. One of those is spray drift. Higher booms create more spray drift. Another one is uh, the effect of the effectiveness of an angled spray. For example, if we angle our nozzle forward or backward or have a twin fan nozzle, a higher boom really negates some of those benefits because the spray has too much time to reorient itself just to, in a traditional downward trajectory. Um, so I want to talk about how do you set the boom height for your sprayer. And uh, first thing is that we have to sort of understand uh, why we have to have overlap of nozzles. And I'll just draw a quick boom on here and try to explain that. We have a traditional boom, and uh, we have typically got a nozzle about every 20 inches or so. And this nozzle generates sort of a fan-shaped pattern, and these patterns tend to overlap like this. It's a normal situation. The traditional way to set the boom height was to say because the, fa the patterns have sort of an elliptical, an elliptical pattern, in other words, if you, if you were under a, a single nozzle, the amount of liquid coming out of them would be less at the edges and more in the middle. So you, have to, you had to have a little bit of overlap to compensate for that. Okay? And the traditional amount of overlap that we always had was 30%. And with a 30% overlap, we're able to achieve a good distribution of volume across the width of that boom. So if you, for example, said we want 30% overlap, that would be somewhere around here. And then you would, uh, you would simply say, okay, this is, uh, this is the boom height, and there we go. So for uh, the tra traditional nozzles we talked about a minute ago, for an 80 degree nozzle, um, that's usually 18 to 20 inches. That's your boom height for 30% overlap. For a 110 degree nozzle, uh, we typically have been going to 14 to 16 inches for that 30% uh, overlap. With the advent of low drift nozzles, we need to forget the 30% overlap rule. We're now moving to 100% overlap, and there's a reason for that. And that is, low drift nozzles tend to produce a lot of large droplets at their edge, and there's actually fewer of these droplets at the edge compared to the middle. So if we had only a 30% overlap, we would have a region right here where there would be a, uh, you know, a fairly large number of large droplets, but almost no small droplets. And so the overall droplet number at that point would be quite diminished. So we'd actually have a deficiency of small droplets in this region here. So now we've decided to go to 110 degree, uh, sorry, 100% overlap, and it will look something like this. Let me 
let's just uh, erase this. Recreate it a little bit. The rule for 100% overlap is to project the edge of your fan into the center of the next nozzle. Okay, so you want to go to a, a height where the pattern width is actually exactly twice as wide as your nozzle spacing. Okay, so you have 20 inch nozzle spacing, you want your pattern to be 40 inches wide at your target height. Okay, and the best way to do that is not even with a tape measure. You simply would take your sprayer, fill it with water, you're doing your annual calibration, of course, that we discussed last time, and you would uh, then uh, raise uh, the boom to a certain height and then just observe where the spray pattern goes and uh, set your sprayer to the lowest pressure that you expect it to run and then simply look for where that pattern goes. It'll, it'll drop off a little bit and make your, set your boom height so that the edge of the fan goes into the middle of the next nozzle and you're done. It doesn't matter what that height is. It probably will be about you know, 24, uh, 24 to you know, 28 inches, uh, give or take, it depends on the nozzle, uh, depends on the pressure you use. So it uh, should be a, a fairly easy adjustment for you to make. Now for a high clearance sprayer, that's actually a pretty low boom height. And so to achieve that boom height and not fear hitting the ground or having other kinds of problems, um, you should consider getting an auto boom height controller, either from NORAC or from Auto Boom Raven or from a manufacturer like John Deere uh, that manufactures that kind of thing in-house. But it, it will help you keep your boom level, it will help you achieve that low, low setting. Um, as I said, low booms are a good thing for drift, they're a good thing for the use of directional nozzles like twin fan nozzles and they're a good thing for uh, kind of penetration in some cases also. Uh, so that's your lesson. Your boom height should be so that your spray pattern width is twice your nozzle spacing. Thanks, and we'll see you next week.